Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty, and this is my assistant, Zoe. And the reason I got Zoe with me today is our interview is with Jennifer Leary, and she's actually a firefighter in Philadelphia, but she's also the founder of Red Paw Emergency Relief Team. And she's going to talk about the work they do in helping protect, uh, rescue, and uh, prepare people uh, to make sure that their pets are protected when it comes to an emergency. So stay tuned. Uh, hey, nice, nice to see you, Jen. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good, good. Well, I, I just want to know, first of all, before we get talking about your organization, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, so I'm a Philadelphia firefighter. I've been a firefighter for 13 years, almost January would be 13 years. Um, prior to that, and well, prior to that, I started with the American Red Cross as a disaster responder. Um, and also I ran the county animal response team for Philadelphia, which is a group that goes out during larger scale events like a hurricane or a wildfire, though we don't get too many of those here in Philly, um, and we'll set up uh, pet shelters with the Red Cross and the Office of Emergency Management if uh, larger events happen and people need to evacuate to shelters with their pets. Um, so I did that for a while, uh, did the Red Cross response stuff for a while, got onto the fire department, um, you know, responded with the fire department. And then um, that's kind of how Red Paul started. I saw that we were filling all these needs for large scale disasters, but there wasn't anybody responding to the everyday disasters as far as um, pets are concerned. So that's, that's kind of the background. So I've been doing Red Paul for nine years as well. Wow. So, so Red Paw Emergency Relief Team. So it's, you founded it. Yes. And um, so just tell me about the organization, how it works, how it's funded, you know, what, what, what you do. Yep. So um, we're a nonprofit organization. We were founded in um, 2011, pro uh, following a large apartment building fire here in Philly, where um, you know, all the people were, were out of the building. I actually responded with my engine company um, and fought the fire and then um, realized that there were still pets in the building and no one was doing anything about getting the pets out. Um, and it happened to be that uh, it took almost two months to get every single pet out of that building because no one had planned for something like this. The fire department didn't um, didn't have a plan in place. The city didn't have a plan in place. Nobody was there to advocate for the residents about their pets. Um, so it turned into a big thing. City council members got involved. And um, right after that, I went to the fire department and the Red Cross and the Office of Emergency Management with a plan to implement Red Paw. I mean, and that took a while, meetings and, you know, red tape and all that stuff. But uh, July of 2011, we uh, started responding with the fire department to residential disasters, residential so, meaning house fires, et cetera. Okay, so when a, a fire, say when the emergency, the fire department gets a call, do you automatically get engaged just in case there's pets there? Is that how Correct. it works? Yes. So there's been a bunch of... Um, different models that we've through the years like we started out waiting for the fire department to call us that wasn't really working um you know they're doing other things obviously so they're not really concerned with calling us about pets they're concerned about putting out the fire um overhaul and all that stuff and so um we went back to the drawing board uh got some input from the fire department and other partners on scene and decided it would be quicker and more efficient for us to automatically respond to the fires um, and canvas the residents themselves to see if they had pets and if they needed our assistance. So what happens now is we automatically get a dispatch from the fire communication center. Anytime there's an incident, we send one of our responders to the scene. They check in with the fire chief's incident management um, and then to let them know that we're on scene for accountability purposes. And then we start canvassing the residents if they're on scene to find out if they have pets, 
if the pets are still in the house, if they need us to go in and get them, or if they need some sort of service, um, we'll provide that service. If the family isn't home during the time of the incident, then uh, once we get cleared by the fire marshal, we'll go in and search the house to make sure their pets aren't left in there injured or scared or, um, you know, what have you. That's awesome, because I mean, it just breaks your heart as a pet owner, you know, when you see these pictures of these you know, dogs that are wandering around and they don't know where their owners are, or, yeah. or I mean, you couldn't get home to, to open the door because you've been evacuated, you know? And so yeah. uh, the stress that the, the, the person has not knowing how their pet is, is that can be pretty traumatic. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, w I couldn't imagine being uh, at work and knowing like, there's a, my house is on fire and my pets are in here and not knowing if anybody like what's happening to them. And so we really we try to get on scene quickly and account for all the pets to, to make sure that the family can focus on other things, you know, getting getting themselves together. Um, and all of our responders are firefighters. So, um, you know, we have the skill set to go in and work with, yeah. you know, the chiefs on scene and other emergency response agencies so we do it responsibly and um we make sure that everybody's accounted for and everybody's safe so um it's been a good working relationship i'm just curious just uh, are the majority of pets they're cats and dogs or birds yes. snakes, like everything majority cats mostly a lot of cats then second dogs, and then Philly is like a city of turtles for some reason. So we get a lot of turtles, it's so random, but we've seen it all. I mean, we've had a tarantula from an apartment building fire in Center City that had smoke inhalation and had to go to Penn Vet. Um, you know, we've had a pot belly pig, we've had snakes and um, you, birds, rabbits, you name it, we've seen it. Yeah, oh, that, that's- yeah, we had a, a that's horse and but I mean horse. that's the reality, right? Yeah. 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 So so what would your advice be to someone, a pet owner? Uh, what would your, your advice be for them in, it, to think about in advance? So they're not stressed out. So they have they have some kind of plan in place. Yeah. So the most important thing is have working smoke alarms in your home. The quicker you're notified about a fire, the quicker you can grab what you need and get out. Um Part of that is practicing your family's fire escape plan and including your pets in that plan. So um, if you're asleep in the middle of the night, your smoke alarm goes off, you know, you already know, okay, when I go to sleep at night, I'm going to bring my dog in the bedroom with me. I'm going to close the door. So if I have to get out real quick, I already know where he is. He's in here with me. I can grab him and go. Same with like with cats. I know a lot of people don't like to sleep with their bedroom doors closed, but it really it's a really important fire safety tool. Uh, it gives you an additional 30 minutes of protection from smoke and heat. Uh, also, uh, once you hear that smoke alarm go off, you can, everybody is contained in that room, you grab them and then you go, but you have to practice these things. So you have to practice getting your cats into a carrier quickly or a, grabbing a pillowcase in a you know, last ditch emergency. Practicing yeah. getting your dog and getting down the steps quickly. These are things that need to be practiced. The most important thing is, though, like, especially if you have kids, is explaining to them that they can't be looking for their dog or their cat or grabbing their turtle. They just need to get practice getting out. And once you hear that smoke alarm, getting out of the house. People like me in the fire department will come in and get your pets for you. So... You know, we want people to practice with their pets and, and ha grab their pets and practice getting out with them. But when push comes to shove, it's, you know, life safety first. Yourself, your kids, get out of the house. You know, I don't, you know, it's hard to say, but sometimes that's more important than looking, you know, if you can't get your pet, you can't get your pet. You have to get out, especially kids need to know that. So um, that's an important tip. And then... The other thing is talking to your neighbors, letting your neighbors know how many pets you have, where you keep them when you're not home, and how to get a hold of you. So having a buddy system. So if something okay. happens and you're at work or you're out to dinner, you know, they can call they can A tell the fire department, hey, she has two dogs in her house. You know, she yeah, usually yeah. keeps them in the kitchen when she's not home. Or hey, I know she has a cat that 
you know, stays in the basement. Um, so they're aware and can be looking for the pets, but also they can get a hold of you and let you know you have to come home, you, you know, something's going on at your house. The third part being you want them kind of familiar with your, your pets. So if the fire department finds your dogs and brings them out, you know, they can hand them off to you and, and they're comfortable with you so that they don't just run loose. I mean, it's, you don't want to come home to your house on fire and your dog missing because no one was there to handle it while you were gone. So those are the most important things I think that people can do. And they're relatively easy. I know here in Philly, um, you can call 311 and they'll provide free smoke alarms for you if you can't afford them. I know the Red Cross does that here as well in the country. You can contact your local chapter. So uh, smoke alarms, number one, the most important, practicing your fire escape plan with your entire family and then talking to your neighbors about your plan and your pets is also very important. That's awesome. And and I, th I do think that's that's really important and it's things I have not done yet with my pet and I'm going to have to because you know, they're, they're family. And uh, you definitely need to think about like, uh, you know, just even to talk through it, like, even if you don't have the time or it's too hard to actually physically practice getting your cat and putting it in a carrier in the middle of the night, yeah. talking through it with everyone. So they have a sense of, you know, how that might look because, you know, once that smoke alarm goes off, you have less than two minutes to get out of the house. So it's something you want to really practice and, and do prior to it happening. I mean, and hopefully it won't, but you got to keep it in the back of your mind. Yeah. And, and so as an organization, I mean, uh, on the video, I'm going to put a link to your website so people can okay. learn more about your organization. Do, do you have people calling you from other parts of the country and, and world saying, hey, how did you set this up? We'd love to do a similar type of model. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have people that reach out to us pretty frequently about it. Um, you know, it's one of those things we know it's needed. Uh, you know, we have a blueprint of success, um, although I think it's easier said than done. Um, it's it's a pretty hard thing to have a major metropolitan city let a nonprofit group on scene of a fire or building collapse or an explosion. You know, it just so happens that um, I have had a really good working relationship with the fire commissioner when we started this. Um, yeah. We you know, we checked all the boxes to make sure we were doing it safely and appropriately. Um, all of our guys are firefighters, so they know how to work on scenes. Um, we were able to get it off the ground. You know, I don't know, and this is like something we're trying to work out right now, if this is a replicable model for other cities. I don't know that we could take this to New York or Toronto and have the fire department just let us start going into fire buildings. Um, so we're trying to work out how how to make this a replicable model because we already we have like the numbers like it's proven to be successful. It's proven to work. Um, we know that it's needed. 65% uh, of households have pets. 92% of those households believe that pets are family. So, you know, $7 billion or something crazy like that is spent on pets each year. Yeah. So we know that it's something that's needed. It's just uh, how to implement it nationally um, has always, has kind of been the stumbling block for us. So, you know, we, we have conversations with the fire department and uh, Office of Emergency Management and others regularly trying to kind of figure figure out how to make that happen. But. Well, good, good luck with that, because I think it is, you know, I, I understand it, it, anytime you get involved with an emergency response type of incident management team, I mean, it's so highly controlled and I get it, it's lives at stake and, yeah. and decisions have to be made very quickly. So you don't want people just coming and going that don't know what they're doing. But I mean, the fact you're trained in firefighting, you know what those variables are and how to deal with them. And so you're you're trained. But, right. Uh, yeah. And I mean, our guys don't go in until usually like until the fire is out um, yeah. and the incident is stabilized. Because we like the last thing we want to do is get in the way. You yeah. know, we let the firefighters do their thing first and then, um, you know, we go from there. So but yeah, it would be hard to get this going without having it would be hard for us to do what we do if, if our guys didn't already know how to work on scene. Yeah. Exactly. Well, is there anything else you want to say or that we didn't talk about that you think is important or? Um, not really. Just, I'm, you know, fire prevention is my thing. Like, yeah. so 
really having people, you know, test their smoke alarms after they see this and, and talk to their families. Um, it's really important. I know people don't think about it. They don't think it's going to happen to them. Um, yeah. But it does. I mean, and, and it might not be your house. It might be your neighbor's house that catches on fire, but you're still affected. Uh, in Philly, we have row homes. And so if one house catches on fire, you know, there's a good chance that this fire is going to spread to your house or at least the, the smoke in the water. So have a plan in place for that. Make sure your um, homeowner's insurance and your renter's insurance is up to date. It's very important after a house fire. That you know, that's mo a lot of times, especially in Philly, because we we have a very low income population, it makes a difference between whether or not you have a place to stay after your house burns down and if your pets can go with you. If you have homeowners or renters insurance, then you can get a pet friendly hotel and then the family can still stay together. And that's a big key to, to recovering quickly after a fire is making sure all the family unit especially including pets can stay together and so little yeah, stuff yeah. like that that people might not think about and you know it's rel especially renters insurance is relatively cheap so for not very much a month it will make a huge difference at three o'clock in the morning in the middle of winter um, to know that you have some place to go and that your kids and your pets can go with you well jennifer thank you very much for all the work you do not only in your firefighting job but with with Red Paw, I'm sure that people in Philly sleep a little bit better at night knowing that uh, their pets are going to be at least cared for um, by an organization like yours. So thanks again, and I wish you Thank all you. the best. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. You too.